<laughs> um, now, different types of transitions. Obviously, when we, we speak of transitioning in worship, we can talk about verbal transitions or, or transitions that the worship leader speaks. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm a leader that doesn't, that kind of is more, I like to transition leading by example rather than telling the congregation what to do. And I know there's um, some worship leaders that are like, raise your hands or, or express your worship a certain way. Um, I like people to have the freedom to express their worship however they're comfortable doing that. I am not in a super expressive church. I am in a Southern Baptist church that has been around since 1876 or something like that. I think we just celebrated our 150th birthday. So my church is not super expressive. Um, but what's interesting is that when I demonstrate a specific expression of worship, I find that my people follow that and, and follow that as example rather than me telling them, let's raise our hands or if, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's okay to even give them permission too. Um, you can say, if you're comfortable, um, this, this would be a wonderful opportunity to, to put your hands together or something. You know, you can, you can do that, but I'm kind of more of a guy that I, I like to lead by example. So if I'm clapping, that's usually the, 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 the worship teams and the congregations um, cue that they can, that it's okay for them to clap as well, rather than me trying to tell them what to do. Um, one of the things that is kind of my pet peeve when it comes to um, helping people worship and transition as worship is foreshadowing the next line of the song. Um, the only time that it really should be appropriate to foreshadow the next line of the song is if your pro presenter isn't working. If, 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 you're, if your lyrics are working, um, one of the things that I found is that sometimes if you just feed the next line of the song to the, to the congregation, it has a tendency to come, come across as a little bit contrived or, or that you didn't have anything better to say so that the only thing you could do is give them the next line of the song. So uh, if, 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 even if it means don't say anything, my, my personal preference for me is not to foreshadow the next line of the song. Just let them sing it when it comes up on the screen. Um, but there are ways that you can kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of lead them to what the next line is that they're going to sing without actually saying the next line. So, um, and I can't think of an example right now, but let's say that uh, you're singing a song about um, the blood of Christ or something like that. Um, and there's maybe a, a little break right before that. Um, you, could, you could offer just a short reflection on the fact that, um, that, when, that when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, that blood was the, was, the, was the beautiful spilt lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You could even quote Revelation um, where, where, we, we, where they're, the, they're around the throne giving praise to the lamb of God whose blood was, was shed. Um, with, and you can lead to that without actually saying the line of the song. So those are all two things that can be done in advance too. As you're, as you're planning, you can be thinking about scripture passages um, that, that relate to lines that you're going to be singing in the song. Um, one of the things that I did early on as a worship leader uh, in trying to get my congregation to, um, to respond more and to be more expressive in their worship is I would encourage them, but it was almost like I was, um, I was almost being passive aggressive with my exhortations and I would actually end up like chastising them because they weren't being expressive enough. Um, and then afterwards I would feel horrible because it'd be like, you know, that, that's not my place to do that. I need to be an encourager, not a discourager when I'm leading worship. And so be careful that when you're trying to encourage your congregation that you're not, you know, and all of us have as worship leaders in our churches, you know, we all have those, um, those, those things in our church where we're like, I wish my church was more this, or I wish my church kind of did this. And so a lot of times, if we're not careful, those things will come through in our worship leading. And we just have to be really careful that we can filter those thoughts so that all of our, all of our exhortations are encouraging and not necessarily discouraging.